Hi Tracy, so um, we're here to talk about SIBO today and uh, is SIBO IBS? In about 60% of patients I think so but uh, it's fair to say that an awful lot of people with irritable bowel syndrome have more than one thing going on and SIBO can be only part of the picture sometimes. So we're hearing a lot about it at the moment, is it a new discovery? Well it's been around a while, in fact the, the first breath testing for SIBO um, started about 20 years ago but it's you know like anything advances in medicine can be a bit sluggish sometimes so we're now starting to hear more and more about SIBO now. And tell me what does SIBO stand for? SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and uh, what that describes is is uh, an extreme overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. Uh, but I thought we were all supposed to have bacteria in our uh, intestines. Yeah, you're quite right. We're supposed to have a lot of bacteria in our gut, but it's supposed to be in our colon, which is in our large bowel, not in the small intestine. The small intestine is determined with digestion and absorption, so bacteria in the upper gut can cause extreme issues. So what does SIBO look like? What are the... Uh, the classic symptoms? presentation of SIBO is lots and lots of bloating, lots and lots of gas, and then some kind of change to someone's regular bowel habit. So a person might suddenly get lots of diarrhoea, um, often six, eight, ten episodes of diarrhoea throughout a day, or they can be resolutely constipated where nothing moves their bowels at all. So how do you go about recognising this and finding it in somebody? It's important to uh, test to make sure that you've, you know that you've got SIBO, and uh, the testing that's out there is pretty good for determining uh, this condition. And the test that I use is the hydrogen breath test using a lactulose uh, sugar solution. Okay, and am I right in saying there's two types of uh, gas that are associated with SIBO? Yeah, there is. The, the gases that we recognise as being an issue are too much hydrogen in the small intestine and excessive methane in the small intestine. Hydrogen tends to give rise to the, the classic diarrhoea presentation that everyone thinks of with, uh, with IBS and with SIBO. But also, what's lesser known is there's also a methane gas, which we know stops the motility of the gut and so causes constipation. So how do you go about fixing this and at what point does someone come and see you? And... I would say someone come and see me as soon as they notice the change to, the, to their bowel habits. SIBO very often happens following a, a bout of gastroenteritis or food poisoning. So someone might have had you know, an upset tummy on holiday or picked up food poisoning when they've been out for dinner somewhere. The normal food poisoning goes away, they get a bit better, but then after a month or two, things start to um, escalate and they start to notice these changes in their bowels that weren't there before. Uh, so if people contact me at that point, then I will ask them a few questions, make sure that I think that SIBO is part of the picture and then I will um, normally suggest some kind of uh, you know, appointment and testing. Okay, so how do they find out more about uh, Tracy Randall and Nerbius clinics? I've got a huge amount of information on my website and the website is www.ibsclinics.co.uk Thanks Tracy for talking to today on SIBO.